Hello and welcome back. After the accident with the Thyrotron, with, um, I've checked the power supply over and it is functioning. It is uh, outputting a voltage, it is current limiting, uh, but the meter is wandering off so there's something wrong. So as you can see it's a massive old thing. I'll just take this out of the way. I mean look at that, that's my hand. That's the uh, power transformer, or one of them. That's the main big power transformer. And as you can see we've got massive caps in there as well which are 400 volt, 2200 microfarad, two of those. And then we've got a smaller transformer here which I presume powers the sort of control circuits and then at the back we've got one uh, where we go two four six eight series pass transistors which are 2n 3442 um, to3 transistors I've just checked all those over uh, for shorts they seem okay right so let's just pass on by there for a minute now then originally I thought this was a thyristor or SCR controlled power supply I, I think it partially is we've got a couple of thyristors here now from what I can see they are controlling the sort of um, controlling it is basically a bridge rectifier sort of and they're con uh, controlling what goes into these big caps into these big smoothing caps so that's our main uh, what do you call it main high voltage I think but then somehow if you look on this board here we've got a couple of LM732 uh, voltage regulators so they must be using those obviously to somehow regulate the the voltage and then we've got a lot of 741 op amps here so they're obviously probably being used as comparators we've got some TO220 devices at the bottom here and I've been traced some of these wires here. I'm pretty sure they go to the bases of these pass devices. So how I think things are just at the moment is that this uh, this circuit board here controls the variable sort of rectification. There must be some sort of phase control to control those thyristors that's that board there I think and then I think this board here is controlling the pass transistors now this is difficult for me I mean this I have fixed power supplies before but this is really complex and the power supply that I fixed before the um, Farnell one was pretty easy I had a schematic there is nothing at all online about these power supplies nothing at all it was made by a company called uh, KSM you can find nothing about the company the only thing I've been able to pull up is that these power supplies look a bit similar to Brandenburg ones again there's not a lot online about those either uh, as you can see at some point in the past it was used at uh, I think that's Royal, something like it, I think it was a Navy base, Vulcan, up in Scotland. So that's all I've been able to really glean on the thing. No schematics, no manuals, nothing. This is going to be a tricky one, this one is. So I've um, started out by just tracing out this, how these are configured. I thought I'd find a fault. You know, I mentioned those 
thyristors earlier on that went there and I've took them off. This is how they are wired. So this is your this squiggly line here is our transformer secondary winding. These are those see these diodes here? They're wired in series to give us our negative voltage. These two thyristors are wired like that, if you can see. So obviously when we turn the gate on, that's going to allow so much current to flow to the positive terminal. So as I stated, I thought I'd find a fault in that. When I checked from cathode to gate, there was a small, um, well it's basically a short circuit. On the ohms reading it reads 28 ohms. So here I've got one set up to try and test it. Sorry, it's all a bit jigged up because my bench is full. Right, so I'm measuring from anode to cathode. And as you can see, we've got 14, yeah, 16 meg. Right, if I touch the gate, I've basically just got a battery with a resistor. I touch the gate, that falls to 4.7. Now it should stay open, but these are quite high voltage, these are CSA 12s, obsolete uh, thyristors, 1200 volt rated, 25 amps. I was thinking, oh shit, I've got to replace these, you can't get them anymore, but you can get replacements for about a tenner, 15, I saw one price, 149 quid, they look alright. So I'm going to pop those back in and pop all the series pass heat sinks back in. But just before I do that, um, let me just turn this off and put my meter down. Right, these circuits here, as mentioned, I think this board is to control the thyristors. So this red wire and this yellow wire go to the thyristor gates. I reckon these are transformers. As you can see we've got um, provision for another thyristor driver here. So I think what's happened is basically this this white wire here comes off the positive so every time we get a positive pulse off the yeah off the positive pulse on the anode we'll get because these are joined together, like for a winding on this transformer, we get a we must get a pulse onto the gate. We can have a look at that in a minute with me high voltage scope. Right, we're on the thigh resters at the moment. I hope you can see that. Now then, I'm not using a normal scope. This is a differential scope. It's uh, for high voltages as well. At the moment I've got the black lead or the negative lead on the uh, negative ground or whatever you call it at the output. And then I'm on one of the gate terminals there. And as you can see, it's some sort of prop, prop, prop trigger and it's the both on the same. On the same ones. Although that's a little different, isn't it? Look, we've got like a ramp. After checking the gates of the thyristors for about half an hour, I couldn't really find anything wrong with them, so they decided to press on and look elsewhere. So I did have quite a bit of footage of looking at the gates and messing about and all the rest of it, but there's no point in showing that up because it led nowhere in the end. Right, as an act of desperation. I uh, pulled all the pulled these PCBs away from the you know bulkhead here and tested every transistor, every diode, same here. Nothing. Didn't find a fault. These two resistors here basically come from the negative terminal on the output. And all they're doing is basically going to the meter. That's just a dropper going to the meter. And it's sort of go, it doesn't really do a lot else. 
So I was thinking, right, well, get me um, op amps out. Maybe I could try just, you know, going to replace all the bloody op amps. Although I haven't got any 732 voltage regulator chips. When I had a cup of coffee, came back and I thought, right, well, I ain't had a look at this um, McGubbins here, this PCB here. And it's interesting because this is the circuit. So off this little transformer here, we've got 20 volts. Now then, that's halfway rectified. And then we've got a sort of smoothing cap here. And then we've got a dropping resistor here. And we've got this Zener diode here. This one which is an 8V2 Zener diode, and that is shorted. Now then, I would think that basically keeps this base here of this BDX332 transistor, which is a high voltage, very high voltage transistor. It's rated for 1,700 volts uh, for CRT scanning. Now then, could it be that all this is doing if we've got, if this is just halfway rectified, we should have like a, a sawtooth wave, shouldn't we? Uh, well, no, like a pulse. You know I me, mean? not a sawtooth, like a pulse, halfway rectified pulse. Where's my pencil? Maybe off here. Maybe we've got something like sort of that. You with know I me? Mean? Now then, that's going to the negative terminal over there. So is that, and then, right, so if that's going into the base of this BDX32, then that, this, the output of this 32 goes to here, to, that's right, no, 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 it goes to this base here, it goes to this base of this transistor here, now then, this heatsink and these two transistors are the only ones that could connect to the positive terminal. There, see that red wire? That goes to the output, positive output terminal. Is that sending some sort of pulse to that? Could it just be that simple that that HV2 Zeno, is he, is, that's the only fault? Could it be that that's what's wrong with it? Let's replace it and find out. There we go, two, three, four. Wish me luck. Mains voltage on. Voltage down. Current set to 20 milliampers. No load. Well, I'll be buggered. Nothing. Minus seven point six on the voltage. Let's set it to try not to move you too quick so you don't get seasick. Set it to ten volts. Right, okay. About ten. Let's set it to Fifty volts, sorry. Yeah, it's just over a tad. Yeah, look, there we go. Fifty volts. Let's stick a load on it. That's starting to current limit, you can hear it. So as we crank it up, it should go. Like this light should come on. Where are we? 2k. Right, so what do you want? 200 volts with a 2k load. Okay, it's starting to current limit. Right, okay, about 140. There we go. Just up in the current to 40 milliamps. I'll just point you down here. Start to limit, shouldn't it? There. 
There we go. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't believe that. Right, I'll just go into the other room and do a little jig, I think. Oh, you bugger, it's fixed. I reckon, anyway. It's behaving like it did before. So it could... Yeah, that makes sense, right? Because... Well, I'm, right, I'm just sort of thinking in my head and I'm blah, 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 waffling. Could it be that that one small xenodiode was the cause of the problem? I think that sounds probable. We were charging this big capacitor here, right? So we had the positive of the power supply going to the positive, and we had the negative going to the negative but the negative were tied to that other capacitor which was at what were it at uh, about 400 volts now then here's a circuit so we've got 400 volts here look we did have a diode so it's going like that so really any positive current shouldn't flow that way, should it? But that bloody thyrotron arced over. Somehow, it must have, you know, there must have been a pulse. Go down here, through this resistor, and taken out that 8V2 diode. I mean, it sound, that sounds probable, doesn't it, to you? What do you reckon? That sounds probable to me. Right, so we've got a... Well, we've got a positive going pulse. That would have been stopped by that diode there, look. And what about this? Yeah, and then it would have dissipated to... Well, I can't remember where this bugger goes. That goes to ground as well. That goes to ground as well. So, yeah, it would have been... Any pulse would have been... Poof, taken that out. It's lucky it didn't take out this BDX32. But it took that little uh, zener out and dissipated through there, maybe. Well, and then it it, it talked through the uh, meter, didn't it? That sounds probable. Right, can you remember I said that we should have like a sawtooth wave? Well, I sort of changed my mind, didn't I? So that's what we've got going to the base of that module there. So, hey, that wasn't too bad. I'm getting better at this uh, reading schematics. So that's what we've got going to the base of that thing what I want to mention. Let's see if it changes when we turn the voltage up. No, it shouldn't, should it? Right, okay. So basically it's just turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on. Right, I've just got to put the bugger back together now then. Right, well I'll tell you, I'm really happy about that because I've got a scope that I've got to fix and in trying to fix it, I fucked it up even more. Um, it came away from the power supply and caused even more problems. So that's my best scope. That needs fixing. What else needs fixing? Oh yeah. Another scope over here needs fixing, and I've not had much luck. This scope here needs fixing, not had much luck with that. So, it is really nice to win one for a change, and to be right, and to actually apply your knowledge, even though it is like a bit, sort of, you know, we don't really know what we're doing, but it is still nice when you bloody win one now and again. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to go and celebrate and have a fag, I think, and a cup of coffee. And go out for a bit of a walk before it chucks it down with rain. Right, well, thank you very much for watching again, lads and lasses, if there are any. Take care of yourselves. Ta-da for now.